Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we will be looking at spores, the endospores. Both words are used interchangeably because they've got the same meaning. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Sayings and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. So let's get started. Endospores. These are formed by bacteria in unfavorable conditions like food scarcity and desiccation. Endospores are resting dormant state. Only some gram-positive bacteria can form spores, not all, right? But gram-negative bacteria never make spores. As you can see, endospores there, they are bright, refractile and kind of round in shape. Lecture outline. We are done with the introduction. Now we'll be looking at the properties. We'll also answer a few questions like when spores are formed, why spores are resistant, how spores cause infection. We'll also look at the unfavorable conditions, morphology, life cycle, formation, function and lab diagnosis of spore and which bacteria are responsible for forming spore, how to treat them or to prevent them. And at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Properties. Spores are hard, dehydrated, multi-shelled, as you can see there, not reproductive, resistant and protective structures. They are resistant to what? They are resistant to antibiotics, disinfectants, the standard ones that we use at home and hospitals, physical agents like radiation, boiling and drying, and also temperature extremes like very high or very low temperatures. And you know what? Bacteria can remain dormant inside the spore for centuries. Like it can live in a hibernated state because the spore is giving bacteria protection. When spores are formed, we all have got environment around us. Environment is surrounding that has got food, air and certain conditions that are suitable for us to live. Same goes for bacteria. If the environment or conditions are favorable to bacterial growth and its survival, bacteria will be in its vegetative state, it will be dividing and germinating. When the environment is unfavorable, bacteria will be converted into endospores. It will not be dividing, it will not be germinating. It will remain in that state until the conditions are favorable. What are unfavorable conditions? These are the conditions that are not suitable for bacterial survival and its growth, like starvation, food scarcity, acidity, temperature extremes like very high or very low temperatures, desiccation, certain physical agents like use of disinfectants, and certain physical conditions like radiation, boiling, and so. Morphology. Spore has a DNA in it, this one, and it's the complete copy of chromosome, not half and not less. Spore has got a coat around it that the outer protein coat, this one, keratin-like. It has got these two peptidoglycan layers. It has got an inner membrane, this yellow one, and an outer membrane, this black one. And it has got a core, that's this cytoplasm and DNA. So what's the cortex then? Anything between the core and the outer membrane. This is the core and this is the outer membrane. So what's in between? The two peptidoglycan layers, so that's the cortex. Spore contains bare minimum of essential proteins and ribosomes. Calcium inside the spore is bound to dipiclonic acid. Calcium does what? It removes water from the spore that makes the spore dehydrated due to that spore is resistant. And dipiclonic acid does what? It helps stabilize the proteins and DNA. Life cycle. This is the normal vegetative bacteria in its dividing state. When the environment is unfavorable, like there's food, Food scarcity, less nutrition, for example, less alanine, bacteria will be converted into its dormant resistant state, that is spore. During that conversion, bacteria will also excrete certain toxins and antibiotics, and this conversion takes approximately 7 hours. But what will happen when the conditions are favorable? Spore will be converted back into bacteria. It will absorb water, it will swell, and the disruption of outer protein code, this one, will occur. And this conversion takes approximately 1.5 hours. And this conversion takes place in favorable environment. Like there is good amount of nutrition, for example, good amount of alanine. Formation of spore. DNA inside the bacterial cell condenses. And it lies in the center of the cell. And then it divides into two complete copies like this. And now the bacterial cell, the vegetative bacterial cell is called the mother cell. And the cell membrane invaginates to form the spore. This is the four spore because it's not completely formed right now. And then this continues to grow. And the mother cell does what? Its membranes engulf the developing spore. And then what happens that the mother cell's DNA is degraded. And the lytic enzymes destroy the mother cell 
and the mature spore is released. Spore is surrounded by two membrane layers. Remember, when the cell membrane of the mother cell engulfs the developing spore, this process forms the two membrane layers, the inner and outer membranes, and also the peptidoglycan layers. And you know what? Dipiclonic acid is formed inside the spore while the calcium enters from outside the spore and as calcium enters the spore water is removed protein coat is formed exterior to cortex spore becomes mature one really high yield thing to notice here that some spores form an additional layer called exosporium a mature spore is resistant to environmental condition this is the mature spore so it is released from the mother cell function of the spore the most important function of the spore is to protect the bacterium but to be specific it protects bacterial dna from heat Chemicals, for example, standard disinfection, enzyme, and certain physical conditions like radiation, boiling. Lab diagnosis. Spore is found inside the cell. The host cell. This is the host cell and this is spore inside the cell. This is normally not the case because the conditions inside the human body are favorable to the growth and survival of bacterial cells. So spore will be converted into bacteria and bacteria will cause infection. Spores are normally formed in the outside environment like on instruments in hospitals like endoscope, catheters, surfaces of tables, beds and floors and walls and so. But when they get into the human body via instruments during any procedure like catheterization and so. So when they get into the human body they will be found inside the host cell. We'll get them from the host cell and will go for microscopy. Spores look bright and refractile under the microscope. We also do endospore staining, like we'll go for malachite green stain that's used for endospores. Spores will stain green while the vegetative bacterial cells will stain pink. This is how the endospores look like under the microscope. They are kind of round bright and refractile. Why spores are resistant? Following things make spore resistant. Calcium dipiclonic acid. As we've talked earlier, as calcium enters the spore, water is removed, so it helps spore become dehydrated and due to that spore resistant. And dipiclonic acid does what? It helps stabilize the DNA and proteins. Then we've got small acid-soluble proteins. They saturate the endospore's DNA and protect it from heat, drying, chemicals, and radiation. Then we've got cortex and finally DNA that has got all the information stored in it. Now, we are going to answer a really important question. That is, how spores can cause infection? In hospitals, endospores get into human body via instruments like catheters, or endoscopes. And inside human body, spore will find the favorable conditions like proper temperature, proper nutrition. Spores will convert back into bacteria and bacteria will does what? Well. They will cause infection. Which bacteria are responsible for forming spores? Just a few gram-positive bacteria. For example, the bacillus, it has got its two species, the anthracis and cirrus. And clostridium, it has got a total of four species, but three are responsible for forming spores. Porphyringins, botulinum, and tetani. I've got videos on bacillus and clostridium, so be sure to check them out. Treatment. Treatment is kind of prevention. We'll go for sterilization, but outside human body, to sterilize the instruments and surfaces to prevent the endospores from getting into the human body. Alright guys, let's review everything really quick. Spores are hard, dehydrated because of calcium, multi shell because of inner and outer membranes and two peptidoglycan layers, not reproductive, protective, resistant, and dormant structures because bacteria can live inside a spore for centuries. Spores are formed by bacteria in unfavorable conditions like food scarcity. Only some gram-positive bacteria like Bacillus and Clostridium can form spores, but from negative bacteria never make spores. Malachite green stain is used to identify spores under microscope and they appear bright and refractile structures. They are treated, kind of prevented, with sterilization. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. You've learned something. If you really did, give this video a big, big thumbs up. Comment down below in the comment section. And if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram, Twitter, and I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, assalamu alaikum.